Hello and welcome. This is a fifth story of the game Dice Cycle, and we are ready to choose the fifth die. My result was five, huh? Five. Just one more step, and I could have brought this to a draw and rematch. But now I will not obtain anything. I began to hate myself. I've always been like this. Always so close, but fail in the end. It's no use. How much longer must I tread the loser's path? If sigh. That girl, beloved by misfortune. Crawling through the abyss, wandering in search of salvation. Leading you to hell. Now the die is cast. The fifth roll. My name is Metaro. I'm just a normal second year student attending a private high school. I don't have any particular skills and my grades are merely average. I'm one of those people who are lacking in personality and individuality. Speaking of which, right now my classmates are wrecking their heads over their career paths after graduation. We're still second year though. I think it's a bit early to be thinking about our future. Everyone's studying seriously, and no one is stupid enough to do anything to stand out from the crowd, because they are worried about getting a black mark on their school report. I'm the same, but I don't think there is any point in thinking about the future. Anyway, I don't even know where to begin to think about the future. Therefore, I'll just live each day as it comes. Today, tomorrow, and certainly in the years ahead. Before entering the school building, I glanced at the flower bed to my side. It's kind of a habit I've always had, cause I feel like that person's always there. Huh? You're not here today? As usual, the flower beds are filled with a huge amount of pink flowers. Thanks to that person's constant tending, they are looking good today too. I don't like to tinker with the soil, so I could never do what they do. While thinking of such things, I found someone who was curled up in a small huddle like a pill bug. Ah, so you were here after all. You're done with watering today, aren't you? The one crouched in the corner of the flower bed is... her. 
Ah, uh, good morning, Metsuroku. When she noticed my present, she gave me a cheerful smile. Have you finished taking care of the flowers yet? Well, I'm done what watering to already. I was just looking at Mr. Aunt carrying food to their nest. She said that and loosens her mouth into a giggle. Ah, that's so silly. If she didn't act so childish, she would just be plain cute. Such a silly thought popped into my head. Rhododendron flowers have five petals and they have such a beautiful pink color. Aren't they cute? Um, what do they mean again in the language of flowers? Do you know, Metarokun? I forgot. She was absent mindedly muttering something incomprehensible again, so I tapped her lightly on the head as usual. Ah, it hurts! <laughs> well, that wasn't that light, I guess. Oh, Metarokun, what are you doing? That's mean. This girl holding her head and pouting is psycho. Sai, as in calamity, ko, as in child. Put them together and it's spelled psycho. What an ominous name. I'd like to see the faces of the parents who gave her this name. Well, that's what I thought at first, but I'm used to it now. I've been seeing her since the school year started. It was a day just like today. I was watching her watering the flowers in the flower bed when she suddenly called out to me. That day I arrived at school earlier than usual. One of the girls was watering the flowers in the flower bed near the school gate. She was all alone holding a watering can in her hand, but she had a happy expression on her face. There were no flowers in the flower bed. I'm sure they've only just been planted. A small rainbow was formed by the water coming out of the watering can, sparkling and shining in seven colors. Look, seven. Japanese people also have a rainbow of seven colors, not six. She waters the seeds, <coughs> not knowing when they will grow, and is excited about the day when they will finally bloom. I can't help but stop and take in the scene. Um, flowers? Do you like them? Ah, this is bad. I didn't mean to get involved, but she approached me. I don't really want to get involved with people, so I gave a curt reply. No, not really. For some reason she smiled when she heard that. It must have been a few months since that day. I'm not in a romantic relationship with Psycho, we are simply friends. I just help her water the flowers every morning, that's all. When I asked her why she was taking care of the flower beds in the school building when she wasn't in charge of them, she said it was kind of a volunteer work. You know, we have a big flower bed, but not a single flower was blooming, so I felt sorry for it. I wanted to do it, so I asked the teacher if I could do it. I guess even a clumsy girl like her wants to be of use to someone. Sorry? I'm still trying to figure out what was this girl thinking. So I wanted to know, just out of curiosity. Somehow or another I ended up coming here every morning to check on her. Eh, <laughs> I've got to stop spacing out like that. I've got to be careful not to get caught off guard by Metro Kun again. Psycho seemed to be reflecting earnestly on her habit of going away into her own world. You don't have to react like that every time. I'm just teasing you. That's how clumsy and silly she is. <laughs> So she often gets teased by her classmates. She herself seemed to admit that it was not bullying, but just teasing. While the two of us were making small talk, the chime ran. Oops, homeroom's about to start already. Let's hurry to class. As I walked in the doorway and changed my shoes, I heard a rustling sound from behind me like a stack of paper falling. 
When I turned around, I saw that a large number of letters had fallen at Psycho's feet. Picking up one of them, she opens it and reads. You're quite the popular girl, aren't you? If you're reading this, you will be cursed with misfortune. You do not send this letter to ten other people within a week, it says. Why? It's just a chain letter. It's a common prank. Metro kun, what is this? Will I be unhappy if I don't send it? It's not, don't take it seriously. It's just a common prank, I replied, and she breathed and she breathed a sigh of relief. Well, I thought so. Thank goodness. I thought it, I was really going to be cursed with misfortune. Um, more importantly, we got ahead to class quickly. Feels right. Class is about to start. We hurried to the classroom. Yeah. Behind me, there was suddenly a loud bang that echoed through the corridor. When I turned around, I saw that Psycho had stripped with all her might. Had tripped with all her might. Sigh again. This is quite a grandiose way of tripping over yourself. Eh? Are you all right? Oh, I tripped over nothing again. She looks like she's having a hard time getting up, so I had no choice but to lend her a hand. Yeah, no choice. I wanted to just go away from her, not helping us whatsoever, but no choice. Thanks, Metaro-kun. When Psycho lifted the... Uh, what? The hem of her skirt? Hem? Is, is, this, is this a word? Is, is this an English word? Hem. Oh my god, it is an English word. It's <coughs> even miserable right now. This is an English word. Hem. Okay. When Psycho lifted the hem of her, of her skirt, she saw that her knee was bleeding a little. Oh, I scraped my knee. It, it hurts. It's more than you'd call a scrape. The sooner we get you some proper medical attention, the better. I am really unlucky, aren't I? She smiled weakly as she brushed the dust from her bottom. How can you keep a smile on your face in this situation? I'd be crying if I were you. Your knees look like poo you just came out of a car accident. Whether she's oblivious or toughing it out, Sheesh, that level of toughness is something I've got to respect. A real doofus you are. Should I take you to the infirmary? Yeah, let's be helpful. No, I can go by myself, it's okay. I'm sorry I worried you. Sorry for always causing you trouble. Psycho seemed depressed with her shoulders slumped, so I patted her on the head, ruffling her hair. Why you can't, Metaro-kun? I just did my hair buns. I continued to pat her head, without worrying that her hair buns were coming loose. Psychopath. Ah, uh, it tickles. Psycho is happy and her mouth breaks into a grin. Well, despite her protests, it seems like she can't get enough of these headpads either. Huh? I took her arm and headed to the infirmary while supporting her body. Because there is no way I can leave her like this as if nothing had happened. I signaled for her to go, and she nodded, her eyes slightly, slightly damp. Metaro-kun, you know. I think I see a little bit of redness on Psycho's cheeks. Thank you for always saving me. <laughs> it's fine, don't worry about it. I replied curtly. Today is not my lucky day as well. Yes. To tell the truth, Psycho is quite the unfortunate girl. She's unlucky from head to toe. She's never been lucky in, in anything she does. 
I think ill-fated describes her better than merely unlucky. It's to the point that you can't believe it's real. I thought it was just a matter of getting injured a lot or having unfortunate things occurring, mere screw-ups, but it's apparently more than that. Her bad luck doesn't just affect herself, but everyone around her as well. According to Psycho, she was already like this as far back as she could remember. I didn't think this was possible, but the longer I was involved with her, the more I believed. I'm getting worried about Psycho. I feel sorry for her, it seems so painful. Because it would be too painful for her to bear it alone. I wish I could protect her from all these calamities. So, feeling this way, I'm watching over her. After school. Today's classes were over and I was getting ready to leave when some people approached me. Some people. <laughs> yahoo, yahoo, thanks for waiting. Metaro, are you ready? I looked up and saw a couple. Yo, Metaro, you look as dull as ever today. These guys are my childhood friends, Yukimaru and Nana. They are going out. Hmm, um... What did you two come over to call me for? The three of us were supposed to go to karaoke after school today, right? Ah, man. I wonder if my face has Amen written all over it now. When I remained silent, Nana opened her mouth in exasperation. You know, you're not going to tell me you forgot about it, are you? In fact, when I took Psycho to the infirmary this morning, I promised her that I would go home with her after school. You know, you haven't been hanging out with us lately. If you can't go, why didn't you just tell me first? You're causing us trouble. Well, well, Nana. Matsuro has many things to do, too. Don't get mad, don't get mad. That's not the point. Canceling on the promised day is just the worst, isn't it? In a bad mood, Nana made a hmm <laughs> with her nose and left classroom. Why is she so bitchy lately? Is it that time of the month? Come on, man. <laughs> Don't say such things. Ikemaru spoke up right after Nana was gone. Well, don't worry about it. I'll follow up. You've got things to do, right? Sorry, I'm counting on you. Okay, leave it to me. Bros gotta help each other out. Remember the last time I helped you out? <laughs> Probably never. We waved his he waved his hand placidly and headed for the door with a relaxed gait. As usual, Ikimaru is a, is a down-to-earth and reasonable guy. In the past, when Nana and I often clashed, this guy was always there to intervene. Looking back, all I can really say is thank you to him. I had a good friend. I did. Cuckoo. What <laughs> is this cuckoo? <laughs> it's Psycho-chan in the next class, right? What? As he leaves, Yukimaru turns around and blurts this nonsense. Well, do your best. I'm rooting for you. It, it's not like that, I objected. But no matter, he just gave me a quick wink and, and walked out of the classroom. I'm not kidding. Who could possibly uh, like that ditzy girl? I thought for a moment. How ditzy is something appropriate? Come on, this be something appropriate. Well... It's like dizzy, but ditzy. Okay. No matter how much I say she's not my lover, that's how the people around me perceive it. Well, it can be helped. Let them say whatever they want. Mm. 
On our way home, we stopped by the park. Psy Psycho and I were sitting side by side on the swings. In the park, small ch children were laughing and frolicking. A few of them were running around and playing a game of tag. It's curse tag. When you touch someone, you spread the curse to them. It was popular back in elementary school, wasn't it? According to her, it wasn't just an ordinary game of tag. Psycho continues with a serious expression. At the time, I thought it was a bunch of crap. So I didn't really react to getting touched. I figured this was all just a game. There is no curse. She's right. It's just a children's game and there is no such thing as a curse. It's utterly ridiculous. This is just tag with a different name, isn't it? So, because of that, I must have been cursed to the very end. Having said that, she lowered her head despondently with a sour expression. I have a little bit of regret. Because it's been so long since then, I think I've become really unhappy. If I had infected someone else with the curse then, like everyone else, would I not have been so unhappy? In other words, the curse from the curse tag that she played as a child is still accumulating in her. That's why I'm unhappy now, is what she's trying to say. In order for me to be happy, should I have blamed someone else for my unhappiness? Psycho stares at me with a serious face. That stuff's just a game. Maybe I just wanted a reason? It might be an irrational reason, but I want to say it's because of that. Something that shows that I wasn't born this way, that's all. Come on, this is too depressing. I let out a deep sigh before getting up from the swing. In such a situation, why don't we lift our moods by having dessert at a family restaurant? When I put it up to her, her eyes lit up. Uh, uh, I, I want to eat a banana crap. Yeah, that's the spirit. Misfortune and bad luck are attracted to you because you're always looking backwards. That must be it. I'm drooling just thinking about it. Hey, hey, are you, are you a little kid? You've got it all over you. Just how much were you looking forward to it? <laughs> so she's literally drooling. <laughs> Our favorite family restaurant is Usatoria. And it's just a short walk from the park. It's a restaurant for poor students with all menu items being reasonably priced. Usually, I enjoy a, a wide variety of drinks at the drink bar and then order just one dessert. Then it's settled. Let's head over there before it gets dark. Thinking of that, at the very moment we left the park, right in front of us, I could hear a car horn honking loudly. Don't protect Psycho. It was over in, in an instant. Psycho, who was supposed to be right next to me, disappeared. I froze unable to comprehend what happened. S Psycho. She was lying some distance away from me, hit by the car just now. I rushed over to her in a panic. As I picked up her body, Psycho smiled weakly. Psycho, don't die on... Psycho, are you all right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay, I, I think. What a relief, she's still conscious. She tried to stand up on her own, but stopped midway through. Huh? It, it hurts, I can't stand up. Maybe it's a broken bone. Oh my god, I need to get her to the doctor right away. When she saw me pull out my phone, she started to panic. Uh, Metaro-kun, are you calling an ambulance? 
No, 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 please, I can manage on my own. Dad will be angry with me again if I have to go to the hospital. Is this the time to be worrying about that? As blood rushed to my head, Psycho grabbed my arms tightly. Look, see, I'm fine, no problem, fit as a fiddle. It's okay, it's okay, this is probably just a bone fracture, that's all. Don't be silly. What kind of an idiotic thing is she saying at a time like this? I ignored her trying to hold me back and called an emergency, the emergency services. Then, less than five minutes later, an ambulance arrived and took Psycho to the hospital. What a relief. Now Psycho will be saved. Okay, I think we should explore the other option. Let's say this one. And maybe try to protect her. And definitely not die ourselves. I'm gonna save Psycho. With that one thought in mind, I immediately pushed her over with my right with all my might. And right after that, my own body flew through the air in a big arc. I slammed into the ground. My neck and hands were bent in a weird way. Ah, humans are more fragile than we like to think. Metarokun, Metarokun. When I opened my eyes, Psycho was running up to me. No, I don't want you to die, Metarokun. There is a warm liquid dripping from my head. This is bad. From the way she's reacting, I might really be a goner. I had thought I had a chance. I guess it's really that bad. Well, I can't really check for myself. Why did you save me? Someone like me? I wish I had died instead of Metarokun. Psycho's face was already in a mess from all the crying. I opened my mouth to answer. Don't say that. But all that came out was a whoosh of air. Oh, I see. I guess my lungs gave out, gave out already. Damn, I can't even get in some witty last words. If possible, I had hoped I wouldn't see your face like this at the very end. Died a noble death. Bad end. Substitute. Late at night, when everyone should be asleep, I'm sleeping in my room, wrapped in a tattered futon. I was awakened by the sound of broken plates coming from the living room. What's going on at this time of night? Did mom and dad come back, I wonder? The two of them always come home late. Dad works overtime past 11 p.m. and mom works night shifts. What are you going to do now? We don't even have any savings. Wondering what's going on, I opened the sliding door a little and took a peek. I can't help it. The terms were unfavorable, but I couldn't say no. There is nothing I can do about it. If you did your job properly, you wouldn't be restruct restructured, would you? If you did it well. What the hell? I was doing everything properly. I didn't do anything wrong. Besides, from now on, you're just going to have to make as much money as I do, aren't you? What the hell did you say? You're trying to get me to work even more? I'm already overloaded as it is. Don't just rely on me. All you need is to get a new job as soon as possible, right? What are you talking about? I've done my very best for us up until now. Shouldn't I be entitled to a break for a bit? It's the kind of conversation that makes my head hurt. Understandably so. I couldn't take it any longer, so I closed the door. 
I crawled back under the futon and tried to figure out what happened with my dumb brain. Ed, what's going on at work, I wonder? Restructuring? What's that? I pulled out my phone and looked up the meaning of the word. It takes a lot of data bandwidth, but I'm usually careful not to use a lot of data. I only use it for times like this. I see, so that was forced to quit his job. This family's living expenses are provided by my father's salary. It's hard to imagine how big a loss it was to lose the breadwinner for the family, but that conversation showed how serious a matter it was. Under the deep blue starry sky, a woman, illuminated by the twinkling stars, was talking with a girl. Good evening, it has been a long time. Good evening, I'm sorry to have entered your garden without permission. That's all right, I've already informed the guards. You are free to come and go as you please. Thank you very much, I love this garden. There are all these beautiful flowers blooming. When I look at them, I feel at ease. Very much so. Eh, thank you. We have a first-rate garden who takes care of it every day. Is that so? Amazing. I want to be the kind of person who can create such an amazing garden in the future. Mm, it seems impossible for me, though. No, please don't say that. I'm sure you can make your dreams come true. Why, why do you think so? Someone like me? Yes, because I can see you have such a beautiful twinkle in your eye. People who long for beautiful things will be able to create very beautiful things. No matter how dirty the circumstances, as long as you never forget your longing, then for sure. But if I forget my longing? It will be fine. But I've been having trouble keeping up. I keep getting hurt as strange things keep happening. I'm always causing trouble to mom and dad. I bring misery to the people around me. I just want to disappear in secret, somewhere no one else knows. I don't want to make anyone unhappy. I mustn't have dreams or longings. They shine too brightly for me. It's better for me to give them up. It's for the best, for the sake of those who care about me, so... I don't think anyone who cares about you would want that. You don't know it, but those people are surely wishing. Wishing for you to embrace your happiness. morning. I got ready and headed to school, a bit depressed. I arrived at the usual time and took a peek at the flower beds. There is no way you'll be here today, is there? After everything has happened yesterday, of course not. No, no, please, I can manage on my own. That will be angry with me again if I have to go to the hospital. I've been stuck on what Psycho said to me. That will be angry with me again if I have to go to the hospital. What the hell does it mean? It's normal. It's normal to have to go to a hospital after a serious injury like that. Just common sense. There is no help in it. I'll take over Psycho's job for now. It's not for Psycho's sake. It's because it's not in my nature to leave things like this. As I recall, all you have to do is fill up this watering can. I mimic the actions she does every day. When I sprinkled the water lightly over the flowers, a small rainbow was formed. Today there is no one to enjoy this time with me. 
There is something a little bit lonely about that. I can't believe I'm feeling like this just because she's not at school. Suddenly, I looked towards the school gate and saw a girl coming in late. She's wearing a cast on one leg and is walking slowly on crutches. It's psycho. I was surprised and rushed over to her. You met her, Okun. Good morning. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? Are you better already? Yeah, I'm completely fine now. I took her back and opened the school's front door for her. Thanks, Metaro Kun. Uh, I'm sorry for making you worry, but I managed to get permission to come to school. But I'm not supposed to carry anything heavy, so it's kind of inconvenient. She smiles pathetically, as if she doesn't care about what happened yesterday. Seriously, what kind of mental fortitude does this girl have? She was scared that her father would be angry with her, but what happened in the end? What kind of parents would make a fuss about medical bills when their daughter is seriously injured? Parents should, have, should value their children's lives more than money. I thought that should have been obvious, but I guess not. I was curious, but I couldn't bring it up because it felt like a delicate topic. Around noon, students are heading to their favorite places to spread out the contents of their lunch boxes. In the midst of this all, a dark haired, slant eyed girl was boredly fiddling with her phone in the space behind the gym. A petite girl with short hair comes running up to her. It seemed like the two girls arranged to meet here. You are late. How long do you want me to wait? I'm sorry I'm late. I'm on my day duty today. I don't know anything about that, so stop making excuses. Uh, I'm I'm really, really sorry. Well, Nana-san is Metaro-kun's childhood friend, aren't you? That's right, I'm Metaro's childhood friend. <coughs> my, my name is Saiko. I've always been in debt to Metaro-kun. Uh, I know. You can cut the introduction. Uh, yes. Do you have any idea why I called you here? You have no idea, don't you? Sorry, I don't know. Sorry. Well, I'll make it quick then. Stay away from Metaro. Eh? I'm really sorry, but I don't want to say this either, but... If it continues like this, misfortune will go to Metaro. You know what I mean, don't you? Yeah, uh, that's... It's... Uh, Everyone who hangs around you becomes struck with misfortune. Isn't that right? It's a rumor going around school. Or do you have a hand in it? Directly? No, that's wrong. I see. Well, I hope so. I care about Metaro because he's my childhood friend. I'd be sad if he died because of you. Yeah. If you were in my shoes, you'd understand how I feel, right? I understand, Nana-san, for making you come out and say this. I'm sorry. I don't want to see Metaro-kun suffer because of me either. So I won't go near Metaro-kun again, I promise. Thanks. So, I hope. I hope you two will be happy together. Oh, very cute dialogue. One girl says another to keep out from the boy. After school, when the sky glows orange at dusk. Where did she go? I haven't seen Psycho since this morning. It's not like we promised to meet each other, but I was kind of worried and looked anywhere I could think of. I'm usually a bit slow on the uptake, so I should at least try to help 
to help out at times like this. The classroom, the courtyard, the flower beds. Ah, she's here. I walked over to Psycho as naturally as I could. Metarokun. I found her looking sad, like she's about to start crying. What now? What kind of misfortune happened this time? I am a psychopath. Don't sympathize with psycho. Well, maybe it's, uh, it is a longer option. Maybe we should symp sympathize with psycho and we will be done quick. Maybe don't symp sympathize. Okay, let's sympathize because I think that if we don't sympathize, it will like continue the story. She will be uh, more yandere and so on. So we will sympathize this time. Let's see if my guess is correct. That will lead us to the short uh, end. Good grief, I thought, reaching out to pat her head. No. Suddenly, Psycho pushed me and I fell to the ground on my butt. And then right afterwards, there was the sound of something clanging. Oh, ouch, sheesh, what did you do that for? When I opened my eyes, I found myself face to face with Saka, who had fallen on top of me. Well, that a beautiful shot, right? Yes, yes, I like it. Very beautiful. Heavy, but this might be the first time I've seen her this close. You're always such a scatterbrain, but it's times like this that you don't say anything. When I looked in the direction of the sound, I saw broken pieces of flower pots scattered around. And not telling me this would have fallen on my head just now. Oi oi, are you kidding? What would have happened to me if this thing had hit my head? I don't want to think about it. She is crying. I, I can't anymore. She covered her face with her hands, speaking in a voice that sounds like she's about to cry. I put my hand on her trembling back and gave her a gentle pat. I'll save you. No matter what I do, it's useless. As she said this, she had tears in her eyes. What do you know, Metarokun? You don't even know anything, right? Nothing can be done about it anymore. Psycho... Psycho's cursed. I'm sure she's been trying her hardest for a long, long time before she met me. With resignation, despair and disappointment, Psycho had been suffering her whole life. Metarokun, I want you to stay away from me. A single sentence pierced my heart. You don't? You might die next time, Metarokun. Like shards of glass, those sharp words pierced my heart. After saying that, she ran away from me. Why did it end up like this? What did I do? That in the end I would become so frustrated. I just wanted to rescue her, to save her, that's all. Even just that, would the world not even allow that to happen? The bitter look she gave me at the end is still burned into my eyes. Will I not be able to save her? My own strength is not that much less than the strength of her misfortune, is it? Is it hubris to think that I'm going to save her? That's not true. Even if I'm like this, I might be able to save someone, you know? You never know until you try. You don't know the outcome until you try it. Life is fleeting and there is no time to dwell on it, so I'm going to... Talk with Psycho again tomorrow. Okay, so I was 
run about the short end and now we will definitely explore the shorter path let's make a save and we'll enjoy a flower pot dropping on our head I started having some second thoughts about getting involved. I'm probably not as good a person as I pretend to be. <laughs> I'm just a kid with parents who support me and take care of me. It's too soon for me to save anyone. When I'm older, when I can protect someone. No. I was crushed under a steel girder that fell from the roof of the school building. Pedant Sordidi. Okay, that was quick. Good morning, Mom. I greeted my mother, who was in the living room, preparing breakfast. Psycho, your father's lost his job. My greetings are ignored and I am informed about that restructuring. You were upset yesterday. What should Psycho do? There is nothing you can do about it. The questions I asked her were quickly dismissed. Things are so bad, I am going to have to start working more. No, even my salary can't cover it. Muttering darkly, my mother holds her head in despair. M Mom, what if I quit school? Then you won't have to pay for it, right? When I made such a suggestion, my mother glared at me. What are you talking about? You think that will be allowed? Go to school. Uh, why? I'm fine with not going if it helps mom and dad. If you stop going to school, how do you think society will look at us? Ah, uh, yeah. And since then, Dad started going to pachinko followers and spending money as if he had given up on life. I just need to win once, you know? It'll be alright, I'll definitely earn it all back. Mom has been poking her face into some strange establishments. She brought home expensive-looking vases and statues that look like a mix of animals and humans. Look, Psycho, this is a vase that can help you earn money just, just by placing it in your house. This statue is a guardian god of some country in the south. If you have it in your room, it will bring you happiness. Even though I had a, a bad feeling about it, I couldn't stop the two of them from going crazy. I can't do anything. I'm no use at all. After a while, people who looked like Yakuza began Yakuza began to fr freaking frequently stop by my house. They slammed our front door roughly and yelled at us. My father had gone to pachinko parlor and my mother went to a strange establishment. So it's just me in the house right now. I know you are here. The voices grew louder and louder, and I ran into the closet. I covered my mouth with my shaking hands and quieted my breathing. Boom, boom, bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. The sounds don't stop, and before I knew it, I found myself in tears. How long? How long I will... How long will I have to live in fear like this? Oh. That night there was a fire in the town. A girl stands blankly in front of her apartment, which is burning furiously. Why? 
The apartment is surrounded by onlookers and many screams can be heard. Firefighters are working to put out the fire, but it doesn't appear to be under control. The girl, who had been standing there looking at the tragic scene, eventually falls on her knees. My, it's my fault. What should I do? What should I do? She lived in a room on the first floor of that apartment. It seems that this was the very place where the fire started. Tears overflowed and formed drops running down from her clear eyes. Mom, Dad, don't leave me. Is it despair in her eyes? Or the remembrance of her deceased parents? Or... After my morning routines, I left the house early. I'm gonna have to talk to that girl again today. Then I'm gonna pat her on her head until her neatly tied hair is all messed up. I arrived at the school in high spirits, but I couldn't find Psycho at the usual flower bed. Um, Psycho didn't come to school today? I was somewhat out of sorts, so I dejectedly trotted off to class. Suddenly, during class, a bad feeling came over me. Don't tell me she's avoiding me on purpose. If that's the case, I'm quite shocked. I was pretty confident that she liked me. Now she might just be resting today. I bet she's right. That must be all. It's not like we're lovers, we are barely even friends. I used to not care about others very much. Now it's the opposite. I can't help but be worried about Psycho. Is it because she's cute? Or because if I help her, I might get something in return? Is it because I'm playing God? Or am I acting cool to boost my ego by trying to help that poor girl? I shook my head fervently. I've got to get those weird ideas out of my head. It's finally lunchtime. Time seems to go more slowly when that girl's not around. I was curious and asked the person in the next class about Psycho, and they, th and they th said she often missed classes. I see, so it's just one of those days, is it? They said they didn't know why she took the day off today, so I didn't get to know the details. But just knowing that was a big help. Looks like Psycho-chan took the day off. I heard from the guy next door. Yukimaru calls out to me in his usual tone of voice. He was still an, as smug and snobby as ever. He put his weight against the wall. Seems like it. So you don't know either, huh? I thought you might have heard something from the person herself. Hmm, <laughs> what the hell, man? Don't talk like you know more than I do. I'm a little peeved. Did you know that there was a fire near the Uzatoria yesterday? Uh, come to think of it, the guys in my class were talking about that rumor this morning. As I recall, a fire broke out on the ground floor of a wooden apartment building or something like that. I only heard about it from others, so I don't know if it's true or not. But they're saying that it was Psycho's place that burned down. As soon as I heard those words, my brain stopped thinking for a moment. Eh? Hey, what the hell? Before I could even start thinking, I was already running out of the classroom. I have to confirm it. That's the only thing driving me right now. Thinking about it, I could have made a phone call, but somehow my body acted first before my head. It took me several tens of minutes to get there, and the place was swarming with onlookers. 
the apartment where Psycho lived had been cruelly burned down to a crisp. In such a condition, people can't live there anymore. Hey, what happened? Psycho, where is Psycho? Is she alive? Or... With trembling hands, I pulled out my phone and called her. Ring, ring, ring. Ring, ring, ring. The number you have dialed is not available right now. My chest is filled with a sense of despair and helplessness, and my phone slipped out of my hand. The phone fell to the ground, and the screen cracked a little. I couldn't connect. Don't tell me she really is... Why? Isn't this too much? I couldn't confirm her safety, and then several days passed by in and blur. A few days since then, after class, I left the school and headed straight home. Ever since I lost Psycho, I couldn't get in the mood to do anything. I couldn't calm down. Even though Nana and Yukimaru invited me to play, I didn't feel like it, so I turned them down. On a dimly lit road, gazing at my shadow, cast by the setting sun, I continued step by step. I bumped into a stranger and almost fell over, but that didn't matter. There was a gust of wind, and then I looked up. I couldn't believe my eyes when I spotted a familiar girl across the road. Psycho? The girl had a blank expression on her face. She was hunched over and trudging alone. I hadn't seen her for a few days, so not much so not much should have changed, but there was something decidedly different about her. She was dressed from head to toe in black morning clothes. Psycho. I quickly ran over to her and without thinking hugged her body with my two hands. It hurts, Metaro-kun. I was worried about you. I really thought you were dead and I... As I said it, I felt like my tears were about to overflow. I'm sorry, but we had a promise. You shouldn't come near Psycho again, right? I won't recognize that. I don't remember making any promises like that. I glared at her strongly and she gave me an uneasy look. You, are you hungry? Me too. I wanted to see Metaro Kun as well. But Nana. Nana? Why is her name brought up? Is not related to this, is she? She told me not to see Metaro Kun anymore, so I can't meet you anymore. At that moment, my hands were shaking with anger. I couldn't even find the words anymore. Unforgivable. Simply unforgivable. Look, I'll choose for myself who I'll get involved with. Not Nana, me. When I told her that, she gave me a small nod, her eyes staring up. That being said, why was Psycho wearing mor morning clothes? Don't tell me. Be that again? I guess it is uh, regarding misfortune. And are you sending those two people off? I don't really understand the meaning of the first option, so I will choose that one. Yeah, it's mom and dad's funeral today. With a wa vacant expression on her face, Psycho looked down at the ground. Her parents died in the fire, and only Psycho was saved. Was this also the doing of her misfortune? The power of misfortune that engulfs those around her. If you look closely, I could see that Psycho's cheeks seemed to be gaunter than before. I can't say anything. 
I just watched her in silence. I'm sure that my cliched words can describe her suffering. I, I know you are worried about me, so thank you, but I'll be fine. Seeing the worried look on my face, she loosened her mouth into a grin. She might think she's laughing like she always does, but I can tell she's pushing herself. I've always been like this, so no, I don't know why, but this seems normal to me now. There is no way you're okay. It would be crazy to lose your parents and be okay with it. You don't look okay at all. Uh, no way. She made an expression as if she got caught lying. This is why, this is why I'm so useless. Because I'm insecure, because I have low self-esteem, I can't even smile properly. Really, I'm so dumb. She muttered a few self-deprecating words that were painful to hear. I couldn't do anything but to watch Saiko as she became a shell of her former self. Okay, I think we have chosen the wrong option again. Okay, it's, uh, it's not uh, a big deal. We can just save and load. Could it be that again? Mom and Dad got in a fire and it, it's my fault. Metaro-kun, what should I do? I'll cause trouble for people just by, just by being alive. Tears started to well up in Psycho's eyes. It would be better if I wasn't around. It would be better if I died instead. Don't say such ominous things. There is no such thing as being cursed with bad luck. And I don't believe in superstitions. No one would be sad if I died anyway. Even after hearing my passionate words, she remained depressed. Hey, I'm dead. Will Metaro Kun be sad? Will you cry for my sake? Blood pours out of Psycho's mouth. Blood. Blood? <coughs> hey. I met a raccoon. I didn't even realize it at the time. I love you. I never thought that would be her last words. Bad end. Suicide by taking poison. Well, that was quick, quick again. <laughs> okay, let's uh, continue this cheerful story from here. In a business hotel room, I was lost in thought. Mom and dad, they both died, leaving me alone. They were burned to death. Oh, you, you both left me. Now we don't need to worry about anything. That's not fair. I'd live with them too if I could, but I couldn't do it. I had nowhere to go as I, ha as I had lost my home and had no relatives who would help. Of course, no relatives would take me in. My relatives hated me, saying I was a cursed child. Well, it was only natural. I have no home, no money, no family, nothing. The only thing that is the only thing left is a huge amount of debt left by my mom and dad. I could probably have chosen not to inherit it, but I didn't. I was afraid I would lose my place in the world. Without any relatives, only they would take care of me. I was put in the care of the debt collectors. I inherited the debts of my parents and this body of mine would be used to pay the debts. Now I'm kind of starting to connect why she is in a business hotel room. 
and I don't like this. What's going to happen to me? Metarokun, I'm scared. Help me. I'm heading to the city tomorrow. It seems like I will be forced to work at that place in that town. I haven't been told what kind of job it is. Okay, so she's not working yet, okay. But I'm sure it's not a good job. Nightlife entertainment, cabaret, sex industry. These words that I felt like I had no connection to came to mind. No matter what the job is, I have no choice but to do it now. I can't escape until I've paid all of my debts. The enormous debt the two left behind. Somehow I thought it was someone else's problem. It never came to mind that I would have to pay it back all on my own. I had such a naive idea about that mom and dad would be responsible for paying it back. I was still just a child. Under the deep blue starry sky, a woman illuminated by the twinkling stars was talking to a girl. Happiness. What is happiness anyway? My family is poor and I sometimes wished I had more money, but I feel like it's not just about having lots of money. Is that really enough to say I'm happy? Just living a life of luxury? But I've also heard that when your life is well provided for, you'll feel quite satisfied. Oh, for isn't that up to each person to decide? Please tell me, I can't figure out it on my own. I'm sorry, I can't tell you about that. Just as others cannot know which, what is your happiness, you cannot know my happiness. The answer lies only within you, my dear. Well, I guess I'll just have to look it for myself. But I don't know. What is it I'm looking for? What is it I want? I wonder if one day I'll find it when I grow up. Yes, there is plenty of time, there is no need to rush, dear. I've been searching for it too, just like you. What is it that fills your heart with true satisfaction? I met someone, and at the end of a long journey, I found him. So, what was your happiness, Nanana-san? Nanana-san. Anemone. My happiness is something that is without form. All this time it was so close, so close, and I didn't even notice it. The happiness has always been there? Yes, I'm sure it's the same for you, isn't it? It's always so close to us that we don't realize how important it is. You only know how precious it is when you lose it. It is a girl from the prequel, prequel Menhera Flesia. I'm tired after everything that's been happened today. I crawled under the covers and closed my eyes. What the heck? Anyway, I'm glad Psycho is unhurt. I'm glad she's alive. I might not be able to do anything specific to help, but just being alive should be a happy thing. It's not a misfortune to be alive. As long as you keep on living, you can be happy someday, right? If you don't give up for sure. Just as my consciousness was drifting off to sleep, I suddenly heard what sounded like a tap on the window. Maybe the wind blew a pebble against the window? Whatever. Let's just get some rest for today. What? It isn't a thief, is it? 
Sure enough, I heard it, the sound of tapping on the window. I anxiously walked over to the window and opened the curtains. Psycho. She smiled when our eyes met. I hurriedly put on my jacket and sandals and went outside. Psycho, who was waiting in front of the house, smiled apologetically. I'm sorry coming at this hour. Were, were you asleep? I hope it didn't wake you. It would be a shock. Hmm, I just wanted to take a moment to say my last farewells. I have a bad feeling about her words which were packed with meaning. Farewell? Yeah, I'm going to leave this town. So I won't be able to see you anymore, Netaroku. She utters a statement that I don't want to believe. There is no way you can convince me of something like that all of a sudden. I'm going to the place of some uncle I don't know, in an unknown city, working at some unknown store. There, they'll take care of me. Uncle I don't know, unknown city, unknown store. My feeling of unease is getting stronger and stronger. What's up with that uncle? Who is he? An unknown city? Unknown store? Exactly what is going on? I don't even have the right to know that. Thank you for everything up until now, Metro Metro Kun. Ignoring my questioning gaze, Psycho continued. I had so much, so much fun together with you, Metro Kun. She was talking desperately in a shaky voice, fighting back tears. Seeing the tears well up in her eyes, I felt like doing the same. We watered the flower beds together, made rainbows, and flowers bloomed. Every day was shining and bright. I'm glad I talked to you that day, Metarokun. I'm glad I met you. My whole life has been nothing but misfortune. But I got to meet Metarokun. That is one thing I'm truly happy about. If we meet again sometime, Let's have banana crackers together. Please be well. Even if you go to an unknown city far away from here, even if you never see me again, hearing this, Saika hung her head. She remained motionless for a while, her expression completely unreadable. Met Metarokun, you'll help me, won't you? She mumbled something and then walked up to me. Because the other day you told me that you were worried about me and that you wanted to save me, didn't you? Here you go, touch. As she said that, she firmly touched my shoulder. Oh, oh, oh. It's curse tag. Saika will give her curse to Metarokun. Don't make fun of me. What are you mad about, Metarokun? Said it yourself. That such games are silly and nothing but superstition. So it's okay, right? Since it's just a game of curse tag. You, thank goodness, now I don't have to go through all that scary stuff anymore. Sorry and thanks, Metaroku. <laughs> From that day on, I suffered countless misfortunes. I lost my parents, the company I worked for was in trouble, I got fired, became homeless, and now I'm on the verge of death, struggling for food every day. How many years have passed since the day she infected me with her misfortune? 
and now I'm about to be murdered for no apparent reason by people I don't even know. I hid myself in a narrow alley, hoping that I won't be found here. It sounds like a lie, it does, but I'm de definitely in a life and death situation right now. Some crazy guy is trying to kill me. As I told you, misfortune is, conti is contagious. The curse was real after all. In front of me stood a familiar looking woman. Hey, long time no see, my Taro-kun. Remember me? I'm Psycho, your classmate back in high school. Ah, Psycho, did you come to save me? Returned the favor back when we were still students. I'm not unhappy anymore, since I passed on the curse to Metarokun. I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Did Metarokun take all the bad stuff away from me? Or maybe Metarokun was born under a star of misfortune from the beginning. I don't know. <laughs> I reached out my worn and dirty hands to Psycho, who was giggling. P please help me. No, don't touch me. Your misery is contagious. She said in a cold voice that I couldn't imagine coming from the Psycho I once knew. You didn't reach out to me when I was in trouble, did you, Metarokun? You just told me to be well, right? Now I'm super happy and doing well, Metarokun. Aren't you glad that your wish came true? Then she left with a narrow smile on her face. Uh, I'm dead. Then, curse tag. Well then, let's uh, continue the story. Now we will be more compassionate. Even so, I still want to save Psycho. I hugged her petite body tightly with both hands. Metaro Kun? I want to save her. I'm the only one who can do it. Just me alone. Y you can't. Metaro Kun, you should quickly leave me. If you are with me, even Metarokun will be misfortunate too. I'll burden you again. Metarokun might even die this time. I definitely don't want that. That doesn't matter to me. I'll risk my life and everything I have to save you. I'm not leaving you until you become happy for sure. Wah! A large amount of tears spilled from her eyes and ran down her face. Even if we are burned together in the flames of hell, I will stay by your side. Oh, and this is the end. The fifth roll. Well, this is a picture we haven't seen. With some red liquid on her face and fingers. Ne ne ne, ne ne ne, animal.
Yeah, I really like this shot, also very cool. Since that day, a few years had passed since Psycho and I eloped. <laughs> Why do you have to use such strange words? Elope. Run away secretly in order to get married, especially without parental consent. Oh my god, there is a single word that encompasses this whole concept. Hmm, I'm surprised. I'm glad I know it now. A few years had passed since Psycho and I eloped. We escaped from the debt collectors pursuing us, and although we weren't rich, we had a peaceful life. Today we decided to go a bit further than usual to visit a flower garden. Go in the place where Psycho's favorite pink flowers bloomed. I took out a small case from my pocket. I held out the engagement ring in front of her. My mind was already made up. She burst into tears and smiled, the happiest smile I had ever seen. You know, I was once told that I could never be happy. It's funny, but it was not completely wrong. I've chosen a life of misery. I'm sure if someone really wanted to be happy, if they really wanted to get out of their misery, they could do so in a heartbeat. But I, I make myself unhappy, you see. I don't want to be bothered to anyone, so I had just wanted to die. But people who want to die really just want someone to help them, don't they? I just wanted someone to find me before I die. Because once you die, you can't even do that, because it's really over then. It's just the two of us on the station platform, waiting for the train home. The train is late, maybe because we're in the country? When we get home, let's have dinner. Hey, what do you want to eat? I've gotten to the point where I can hold silly and trivial conversations with her. We got to know each other so well that we could even joke around. She still has the same misfortunate disposition as ever, but it's not so bad to the point of being deadly. Metro-kun, if I said I want to die, would you die with me? What? Just kidding, it's a lie. Were you surprised? I won't say stupid things like that anymore. Because you are here with me now, Metaro King. Right now, I'm so, so happy. Why did I need to see this? <sighs> Why? Everything was so good. <laughs> yes. Oh well. I told you already, we don't have any money for health care. Hey, cut it out. Look where you are. Everyone's looking at you. But I don't want that daughter of mine. Hell, if I care if she dies, I can't afford her. What the hell are you saying? That's our child you're talking about. Our treasure? I don't care. I don't remember having a child like that. Enough, damn it. Stop talking about money. 
why don't you stop gambling it all away instead? Shah, the other day you bought a strange jar that cost a million yen too. That's a holy relic that, that can attract and save up money. Nothing like your wasteful spending. Mom and Dad were having a dispute about my medical expenses. The sounds came from outside my hospital room. Even though they were in the, hu in the hallway, their voices echoed all the way to here. All this happened just because I got hit by a car and broke my arm. Please stop it. Please stop, Mom. Then, seeing me in tears, the nurses all expressed their pity. Psycho Chan, I'm sorry for you. With parents like that, <laughs> it's not like. <laughs> when you want to express a pity, don't say it. I have to live with these parents when I go home. It won't help me that they are dead parents. Yeah, a child doesn't get to choose their parents, do they? It felt good to have people look at me with pity. Oh no. It begins. I know it's weird, but I'm strange like that. I know I shouldn't be having these inappropriate thoughts, but it's such a, an irresistible pleasure to be looked at with pity. Here I am, who a little me, come look at me, people, and be kind to me. I want to be pampered. Yes, I'm in love with my pitiful self. That's why I play this role, no matter how much I'm laughing at my heart. I'm trying so hard to hold in my laughter and play the poor little needy psycho. One evening, when everyone was fast asleep, I made sure that mom and dad were asleep in their bedroom. Already, you two are not needed anymore. So I set the tattered carpet on my house on fire and left. Happy end, true happiness. And I set my house on fire with my parents in it. Thank you for playing. No, thank you for providing me with this game. S O. Let me write this down. Well, that is it for today. Thank you for watching. And uh, like, comment, subscribe, whatever you like. And have a great day. Bye.